Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. The colours are created by a quirk of physics. As the soap film gets thinner and thinner, it gets to a point where the film is within an order of magnitude of the wavelength of light. This picture can be achieved relatively easily with the application of good technique. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so I'm going to start with uh, the soap solution. And I found that a good solution can be made by having two parts of water, like that, to one part of washing up liquid, and one part of glycerin. Now we just mixed all that together, and that will form the soap solution. Now, you need to find the right sort of container to put that in, uh, and I've found uh, that this uh, old cup will work quite well. It's ceramic, so it doesn't have a lot of shine to it, uh, and it will cut down the internal reflections being of a dark colour. So all we need to do is pop a little bit of the solution in there. Now, I'm going to put this uh, on the top of a retort stand, this, just to get it at a comfortable working height. So that should now be able to create the bubbles uh, as we need them. So the next thing to do is to look at the camera and how to position that. So to capture this sort of image you can use virtually any camera. What I'm going to do is make use of this 5.4 uh, technical camera. Now on the front of this I have a Schneider lens, this is 150 millimeter, uh, and I'm going to be using that in conjunction with a medium format back on this camera. Uh, so that's going to give me the full format uh, equivalent of about a 90 millimeter lens. Now you need something relatively long like that so that you can have some distance between the soap bubble and the front of the camera lens. Uh, when the soap bubbles burst, they tend to spread um, lots of particles of soap and water absolutely everywhere. So you do need a little bit of distance between the front of the camera and the bubble. So about 90 millimeter or longer should do that. Uh, the other thing is, you're going to be fairly close to the subject. So I'm using the bellows here to give me a bit more extension. You might need to put extension tubes or use a macro lens uh, so that you can get in relatively close. OK, so there's a few things I need to change on this. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just take off the back standard here, like that. And I'll take the bellows out as well for the time being. And at the back here, I'm going to place a medium format digital camera. Here we are. This is a Phase 1 uh, IXA 180. Uh, this is actually an aerial imaging camera, which I've been loaned. Uh, and it has a true medium format sensor uh, inside it. So the area of this sensor is about two and a half times the area of a full frame camera. OK, so I'm just going to take the body cover off the front here, like that, and pop this bellows on the front of the camera. There we are. And now I can just bring those back, and that will form my camera. So I'll be using the focal plane shutter in the camera uh, to actually take the images with uh, and I can synchronize the uh, flash that I'll be using with the aid of this flash sync trigger which I have plugged into the camera. So we need to now position that in something like the right place. There we are. So that should be uh, something like in the right position. Uh, what I've done is turn the camera on and connected it to the Capture One software so I can control the camera from this software. You'll also be able to see the results as I take the pictures. 
Okay, so the important thing here is, like I said, the distance from the subject to the front element of the lens. Uh, you need to make this as large as is practical, really. Uh, the other thing is that all this is on exactly the same level. So the top of the container here, where the bubbles will be, is about the same level as the centre of the lens. Uh, that way you'll end up with uh, quite a nice shape uh, and it should work uh, relatively well. OK, so with all that set up, what we'll do is just grab an image and see what we get just with the house lights. So these are the settings that I have on the camera at the moment. I have a sensitivity of 100 ISO, I have a shutter speed of a quarter of a second, and it's showing an aperture of f8. But that's actually not the aperture, that's just a default because there's no lens connected to the camera. The lens I'm using is the one that's on the front of the technical camera, and that is currently set to f16. OK. So with those settings, what I'll do is grab an image and we'll see what we get. And there you are, you can see we've got the beginnings of an image there. Uh, so if I were to use those settings, I would get that amount of contamination from the house lights. But I'm actually going to use flash, so I can use a much shorter shutter speed. So instead of going for a quarter of a second, I can go for a hundredth of a second. So at this shutter speed, see what we get now. There you are. So we get a completely blank frame, which is exactly what we want. OK, so to set up some lighting then, uh, the way to shoot this type of thing is to have uh, as large a softbox as you can over the top of the bubble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a relatively small softbox. This one here, which is a two foot by two foot softbox. And I'm just going to pop that up in the air a little, like that. And we'll place that over the top. There we are, something like that. Now in this sort of position, uh, it will give me the illumination, but it will also um, show up in the top of the bubble. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, we need to encourage some bubbles. So we'll use the straw here, just stir that around a little, and we'll just blow a bubble. There we go. OK, so with having some glycerin in the mixture here, it makes a stronger bubble, uh, so it will last for an amount of time. So with that set, and grab an image with flash. There we are, and you can see straight away that you're getting the colours in there, but we're also getting this shape, and that is a function of the distance and size of this uh, softbox. So let's just move that and see what happens. I'll start off by getting it as close as I can, and we'll grab that again. So in this capture, you can see that the colours have moved slightly further down the bubble. If I go to the previous image, that's what we had before. And that's what we've got now. But it's still not covering an awful lot of the bubble surface. The other thing that you can notice is that there is a slight background contamination in here. Um, so, to solve both of those things at the same time, first of all the background contamination, I'm just going to put uh, a piece of black cloth just over the join uh, on my Frankenstein of a camera here. So what we'll do is just pop that over there, like that. That should stop any spurious light entering the camera system. And as for the softbox, what I'm going to do is swap this out. There we are, so that's been swapped out for this uh, four foot by six foot softbox, uh, which I've suspended from a pantograph from the ceiling of the studio. Now, obviously this is a very large uh, softbox, um, but it goes to prove the principle that the bigger you can get your softbox, the better the result will be. Okay, so we'll just uh, initiate another bubble, in the container here. 
There we go. And we'll just give that a try. OK, so here we can see that we've lost a lot of the background haze, but the shape of the illuminated area on the bubble is very similar to what we had before. Now that's because this is a lot higher than the other one was. If I now put this at the same height one was, like that, we grab that again, you should see the difference. There we are. So now we're getting an awful lot more coverage, uh, as you can tell. So it's gone from that to that. And this is all a little bit of diminishing returns. This is a very large softbox, uh, and you do get a, uh, a better result, but the difference is relatively small. So you can probably uh, make do with something uh, a little smaller than this, but you want to try and use as big a softbox as you can. OK, so with everything set, uh, it just remains to uh, grab a few images. They will all be different, and the best thing to do, I find, is uh, blow the bubble and then wait until the film has become very thin. OK. So let's just grab that again and see what that looks like. Yes, and you can see the difference between those two. That's what we had before, that's what we've got now. So with most things of this sort of nature, it pays, once you've got it all set up, to take lots and lots of different pictures of different bubbles. OK, so with that image now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do any post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the file of the image that I particularly liked out of all of the ones that I took. So this is what I've ended up with. OK, so to move this along, the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this. So I'm just going to right-click on the background layer here, uh, ask for a duplicate layer, or ask for a new document. And we'll just call it Bubble. OK, so I now have a new file at the top here, and I can dispense with the camera original. Therefore, I've got redundancy. OK, so uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually crop the image. So I'm just going to use the Crop tool here. Now I'm going to be using this for video, so I'm going to pick a specific ratio, uh, 16 by 9. And the first thing I'm going to do is just level it up a little. So I'm just going to straighten that using the straighten command, just across the top here, like so. There we are. And now I'm just going to concentrate the image a little. There, I think that looks quite nice. There we are. Now, obviously, I started with a huge file. Um, this is an 80 megapixel capture, don't forget. So I can quite happily crop in the image and still retain extremely good quality. OK, so now just to get rid of all the various bits that uh, I don't want, I'm going to add another layer, like so. And on this layer, I'm just going to paint with black uh, all the bits that I don't want. So making sure that black is selected as the foreground colour. We'll just pick a paintbrush and I'll just paint that in like so. OK. And just on the actual image layer, uh, what I'm going to do is just add an adjustment to that. So I'll just add a levels adjustment. And just using the set black point icon, uh, I'll just make sure that my background is truly black. And while I'm here, I might just alter the contrast a little. There we are. 
So there we have it. An image which encapsulates physics in action. You can see all the diffraction patterns generated by the film bubble and captured with the right technique it can make a very striking image. And I think overall that has worked extremely well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.